Welcome to our presentation. We are Team Puran and our problem statement is Cyclone Intensity Estimation. In this video, we will walk you through our thought process and research that went into our solution. This is our team which has been created meticulously with the sole purpose of solving this problem. Everyone has experience in different domains, so all of us bring something unique to the table. Now we will explain our solution in a step by step manner. We read up about the way cyclone intensity estimation is achieved without using deep learning techniques. Analysts have been using the Dvorak and the DAVT techniques for years to analyze cyclones. We will take the example of the Dvorak method here. What they have to do is that the analysts will look at the cyclone image and then compare it with the chart here to see which pattern matches the most and based on that they estimate the intensity. Since this method relies on human input at such early stages, it causes inconsistency in the prediction. Our pipeline aims to move the analyst's role at a later stage. We will be specifically thinking of a solution using deep learning techniques. Cyclones are formed by wind moving inwards to the low pressure region. The most crucial label in estimating the intensity of a tropical cyclone is the maximum sustained wind speed based on which the IMD has standardized the categorization of tropical cyclones. Any deep learning problem starts with the collection of relevant data. The data set which we are using consists of infrared imagery from the INSAT 3D satellite collected from MOSTAC. We ordered level 1 images 6 channel data which is available at 30 minute intervals. From this, we will be using the mid-wave infrared, water vapor, thermal infrared 1 and 2 channels for our data set for the convolutional neural net. The VIS channel consists of RGB images which will be used as reference while labeling our data set for the object detection model. We extracted the wind speed data from best track data maintained by IB tracks. We checked that the distribution of which check what the distribution of the data looks like. The number of training samples decreases with increasing wind speeds as expected. But there is an abrupt spike at 80 knots, which implies that there is either missing data or duplication of data. This is a flaw in the data set which we will have to work with. Another problem we faced was that IB tracks wind speed data was at an interval of 3 hours. Unlike the IBE INSATS data which is available at every 30 minutes. To compensate for this lack of labels, we have decided to generate labels using interpolation. After the appropriate data set has been compiled, we move on to the pre-processing steps for the images. First move in pre-processing is to crop out the certain regions of interest from the images. Since no cyclonic activity taking place in the southern Indian Ocean can cross the equator line, we have decided to crop that part and focus solely on the northern Indian Ocean region. Cyclones cannot form or pen penetrate into huge land masses, so we have decided to crop the area above the 30 degrees north line. Second stage of pre-processing the images is binarizing the images. We pick a custom threshold that maintains cyclonic activity in the image whilst removing unnecessary details. As you can see clearly, this produces huge contrast in the images which makes it easier for the object detection model to learn about cyclones. Now that the pre-processing has been wrapped up, we can move on to the detection of cyclone. We will build a custom object detection model based on the YOLO V5 architecture. The training dataset for this model will be pre-processed images which we generated in the last step. We start annotating the cyclonic areas by hand referring to the cyclones pass from the Indian Ocean archive. After that step, the centers of bounding boxes will be shifted to the coordinate values provided in the IB tracks dataset. By doing this, the model will learn to predict accurate centers. For getting the detection outputs, we will run the model on four different channels and then get a combined average using intersection over union of the bounding box for an even more precise prediction. Now, from the precise cyclonic region, we can get to the part where we estimate its intensity. IMD has set a scale for classifying cyclones by using wind speed readings. We train our convolution network to classify cyclones based on those very categories. For the architecture of our CNN, we will be referring to the findings of the deep macro architecture. Now that architecture was specifically built for the purpose of classifying cyclones intensity. We will further experiment with the smaller kernel size in the initial layers to pick the subtle details like sharp edges, spiral lumps, and growing size of tropical cyclones. While building solutions for sensitive topics where inaccuracies can have severe repercussions, we cannot blindly trust neural network models like black boxes. But with practices like explainable AI, we can look inside these black boxes. We plan on tracking the features learn being learned by our convolution network by visualizing the outputs from each layer. Using tools like Dratcam, we can tell which specific areas of the images are being used for the classification model to identify different classes. 
Along with the wind speed, we will also consider other features to determine the intensity of the cyclone, such as the co area coverage, the pressure drop, and its frequency. We can find the area coverage by counting the white pixels in the binarized images of the cropped region of interest. Using the past data which we have, we will also show what the frequency of the cyclone is formed in the region and the probability of the cyclone formed evolving into a major cyclone. After the categorization step, we will also attempt to predict the movement of the cyclone. For this, we will be using the latitude and longitude of the cyclone and the distance between its center and the nearest coastline. Satellite images belonging to the same tropical cyclone should have the same relationship with one another, meaning that the estimated path of the subsequent images should not change too drastically. Using this, we can produce a dataset for training our RNN LST model to estimate the movements of the cyclone. To show the output from our pipeline, we will build a web based portal. For the front end, we will be using Streamlit since it is built very fast for the efficient prototyping. If a database is to be maintained for a portal, we can have a serverless Firestore database to add to our web stack. We provide different options to see the intensity of tropical cyclone activity in any given time, the estimated path, and also the affected area. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.